Hi everyone, today's video is a little bit different as I won't dive into the details and history of this SGI Octane 2. If you want to know more about the machine, Neil from the Retroman Cave has already done an amazing review and video, so I'll link it down below. Today's video is only going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to reinstall the Arix operating system from a remote source. So if you're not interested, feel free to skip this episode and check my other videos. My machine is an SGI Octane 2 with dual 400 MHz R12000, a crazy 8 gig of RAM and two graphic adapters. When I got the machine, it was able to boot properly, but I was stuck at the login prompt as I didn't have the password from the previous owner. I also wanted to say that I started this project with absolutely no knowledge on IRIX nor SGI, and I still managed to make it work. So I don't pretend knowing what I'm doing. I'm just a total noob sharing my knowledge, mainly as a reminder of my steps for my future self. So, the idea was to take all the drives out and install iRigs on a fresh drive. One of the ways to reinstall the system, and probably the easiest, is to use a SCSI optical drive, but I don't have any. So, I went for the remote directory installation. Basically, connect to a network resource to fetch the installation packages. And to do this, I used the Bootriser project. It is using the Raspberry Pi as the base platform to run the virtual machines and services required for the remote installation. You simply download the huge image file and burn it onto a 32 gig SD card. It already comes with the RX images and you can pick between two RX versions. So you shouldn't need anything else. I'm using Belena Etcher to burn the SD card. Once done and inserted on the Raspberry Pi 3, just follow the instructions. Let's first change my keyboard layout and connect to my Wi-Fi. Now we need to update the settings.yml file. The only lines I've edited were the client IP and MAC address. At this point, it is a good idea to console in your SGI using serial port 1. If you don't have anything else attached to the machine, it should trigger a keyboard error and display the system maintenance menu. Type 5 for the command monitor. You can get some high-level information about your system by invoking hardware inventory command HINV. For our next step, we need to print the environment variables by typing print env. Take note of the MAC address, because we'll need that later. Now we need to update the IP address so we can be on the same subnet as the Raspberry Pi. Type the following command. We can now go back on our Raspberry Pi and enter the MAC address and IP on the settings.yml file. Let's go with the next command. For some reasons, the playbook didn't work the first time on a Raspberry Pi, so I had to run it again after a reboot. All right, now we can connect the Pi's Ethernet to the SGI. I'll use a small switch in between as I don't have crossed cable. I wouldn't advise to connect those to your main router as the Pi is running a few services that could mess with your network. Let's now load the disk partitioner by typing the boot p command. If your Pi is configured properly, it will load and you can select all the options. Type R for repartition, then RO for root drive. Then exit with slash exi. We can now go back into our system maintenance menu and select 2 to install software. 
enter option 1 for remote directory and type bootriser for the remote host and then enter the path of your images. My first attempt gave me a PROM error, but it worked after a reboot. While it's loading the mini root, you should see this on your SGI's output. If something failed or you want to clear your hard drive, you can pick admin with option 13, then MKFS with option 11 to clean your disk and make a new file system. Back in the admin menu, type the following to load the bootriser selection. Then select the feature stream by selecting option 2. Once you see all the images, type done, then return. Let's select our packages with the following commands. And go to finally start the installation. It took about 15 minutes on my system, so let's fast forward to the end. We can now quit. This will reconfigure the system. Here we go. Now on the SGI's output, we have the login screen and we can select Easy Setup to go through the initial setup. Here we go. A last reboot and we're now ready to enjoy our fresh system. To remove the session's password from the old system, I simply plugged the old system's drive on another bay, and after mounting the drive, browsed to slash etc and edited the passwd file to remove the encrypted password, deleting everything between the columns. After swapping the drives back to original, I was able to enter the root account and enjoy some cool demos. I hope this was helpful for someone, and as usual, Thanks for watching.